welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिलंजगत चरीकर्ति बरीभर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिलंजगत चरीकर्ति बरीभर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया as we have said before the focus of this course is the three types of samasas in sanskrit and their treatment in paninian grammar namely avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva currently we are studying avyayi bhava samasa initially we studied the theory of compound formation and the derivation process of the compound in general which is applicable to all the samasas of sanskrit <clears throat> this derivation process is a rule based process where the rules are stated in the grammar of panini called ashtadhyayi so we keep referring to this particular text and in accordance with it we study the compound formation process we started studying avyayi bhava samasa and we have studied some examples of the avyayi bhava samasa as well as the derivation process of the avyayi bhava samasa as well as some of the important features which distinguish an avyayi bhava samasa from the rest some of the features can be stated in the form of an equation where we have x and y as two separate or independent entities in terms of word form as well as meaning as well as accent these two x and y they are semantically related so the speaker of sanskrit decides to join them together and merge them together and do the processing and generate an output which is one unit one unit the nature of this one unit is xy this is one unit in terms of the meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent <coughs> xy is one word which denotes one meaning and which has one accent in this xy x assumes the position of the head both in terms of the meaning as well as the word form if another word in the sentence is to be semantically related to xy it has to be done through the meaning of x similarly in this avyayi bhava samasa x generally happens to be an avyaya an indeclinable and the 
generated output samasa namely x y which is an avyayi bhava is also stated to be an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha and so we see that the head of x y namely x also affects the word form of x y in the ashtadhyayi the avyayi bhava samasa is treated in different sections so first we find the sutras prescribing the avyayi bhava samasa in 2.1 starting with 2.1.5 namely avyayi bhava up to 2.1.21 namely anya padarthe cha saudnyayam this is a section of sutras which are called the compound prescribing sutras and we started studying these sutras and we shall study the sutra in this section even in this lecture then we also note that there is another small section in 5.4 from 107 up to 112 which consists of the sutras which prescribe the end of the samasa suffix samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra this section we shall study in the course of this lecture lecture series in this course and then we have the swara vidhayaka sutra for example 6 to 121 which we shall study later in this course right now we are focused on the samasa vidhayaka sutras and we have been studying 216 which is this sutra avyayam is the first pad in this sutra and this avyayam is in the prathama vibhakti therefore it becomes upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then because of the sutra upasarjanam purvam the avyaya occupies the initial position of the samasa the second pad in this particular sutra is a very big compound this is a dvandva compound vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi arthabhav atyaya asamprati shabda pradurbhav paschat yatha anupurvya yoga padya sadrashya sampatti sakalya ant all these make a dvandva compound and then there is a shashti tatpurusha samasa etesham vachaneshu now this is a dvandva garbha shashti tatpurusha samasa this big compound comprises of various semantic conditions we have studied almost all of them so far now sakalya and ant are the two which remain to be studied which we shall study in this particular lecture first let us take a look at the meaning of this particular sutra which is very important for us to see what it means is that विभक्त्यादिषु अर्थेषु विद्यमानम् अव्ययम् सुबन्तम् समर्थेन सुबन्तेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति आई रिपीट विभक्त्यादिषु अर्थेषु विद्यमानम् अव्ययम् सुबन्तम् समर्थेन सुबन्तेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च samaso bhavati what it means is that any indeclinable subanta denoting the sense of vibhakti etc 
is compounded with any other semantically related subanta and the resultant compound is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, any indeclinable subanta, avyayam subantam, denoting the sense of vibhakti etc., vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam, is compounded samasyate with any other semantically related subanta, samarthena subantena sah, and the resultant compound samasaha is called avyayi bhava, avyayi bhavaha bhavati. This is the meaning of the sutra. What it highlights is that the avyaya means any one of these meanings and then the avyayi bhava samasa can take place. In this lecture, we shall focus on the remaining two semantic conditions stated in this particular sutra, which act as the input for the derivation of the avyayi bhava samasa. They are sakalya, that is entirety, and anta, that is end. Let us study them one by one and how the tradition interprets these is also a matter of study. So let us first study Sakalya, which means entirety. The tradition explains the word Sakalya by the word Asheshata, where nothing remains, everything is covered. So when we want to convey the meaning with the grass, which means without leaving the grass, we have the laukika vigraha saha trunena. Now, this laukika vigraha gets converted into an alaukika vigraha in the following way saha plus su plus truna plus ta. Saha occupies the initial position in the samasa because. Avyayam is in the Prathama Ekavachana in this Sutra 216. So it has become Upasarjana and therefore it occupies the initial position of the Samasa. So we have Saha plus Su plus Trana plus Ta. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. Now here we get the Samasa Saudhnya. And then we get the Pratipatika Saudhnya by the Sutra Kritadhita Samasascha. And then we apply the Sutra Sopodhatu Pratipatika Yoho 2471, which deletes both the Sups, namely Su as well as Ta. So we get Saha plus 0 plus Trana plus 0 as the output. <coughs> Now we continue the process and we apply the sutra of Yai Bhave Chakale 6381, which we have already studied before, which says that in the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, when the Uttarapada is different than Kala, Saha in the Purvapada is substituted by Sa. And this is what is precisely happening over here. The Uttarapada is Trana, which is other than Kala, and therefore Saha is substituted by Sa. So we have Sa plus 0 plus Trana plus 0. And when we join them together, we get the finally derived compound output, namely Satrana. This is an avyayi bhava samasa. Now, when we use this in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. So, we have satrana plus su. Because the avyayi bhava samasa satrana ends in short a, so we apply the sutra navyayi bhavad atomtva panchamyaha and substitute su by am. So, we have satrana plus am. 
then we apply the Sandhi rules and we get Satranam. This is a Subanta form. Now let us see what is the meaning of this particular sentence. Saha Satranam Atti. Saha Satranam Atti. And remember that this Samasa Satrana has happened in the semantic condition of entirety or Sakalya or Asheshata. So what this sentence Saha Satranam Atti means is that he eats also the grass. What it actually means is that he eats everything served. He doesn't even leave the grass. So everything is being eaten. The guy is so hungry that he does not leave even the grass of which the plate is probably made. So the tradition says that Natra Trnabhakshane Tatparyam. This sentence does not state that somebody is eating the grass. That is not the intention of the speaker. Trnabhakshanasya Aprasaktehe. Because the eating of grass is not applicable as far as a human being is concerned at all. Therefore, the sentence is not intended to highlight the fact that he eats grass. But what it is supposed to highlight is the following. Nakinchit abhyavaharyam parityajati. He does not leave anything which is to be eaten. Abhyavaharyam na parityajati. Iti adhikartha vachane tatparyam. So by the use of the word trna, this additional meaning is to be conveyed by the compound. Satranamatti means he eats also the grass, meaning thereby that he doesn't even leave the grass, he finishes everything. Na kinchit abhyavaharyam parityajati iti adhikartha vachane tatparyam. The tradition explains this further by saying that patre parivishtam sakalam bhakshayati Whatever was served in the plate, the guy eats everything. Here the word sakala is used in the explanation which is what is the base word in sakalya. Sakalasya bhavaha sakalyam so, patre parivishtam sakalam bhakshayati is the meaning intended when saha satranam atti is spoken. What it means is that yohi trunani abhyavaharati saha katham anyad abhyavaharyam parityajati. Yohi trunani abhyavaharati, one who eats grass, how sahakatham anyat abhyavaharyam parityajati. How can he possibly discard any other food to be eaten? If one is so hungry that one is also eating the grass, then it is obvious that he has not left any food to be eaten there. This is how the tradition explains the sentence and the concept of Sakalya. So, Satrana refers to the entirety which is suggested by the word Trana. Now let us study the final semantic condition stated in the Sutra 2.1.6 which is Anta which means 
end. The tradition has explained <coughs> the tradition has explained this semantic condition in a peculiar manner. Let us study that. The first explanation is Antyavayava Sahityam. Antya is final, Avayava is part, and Sahitya means togetherness. So, what it means is together with the final part, which is what is the meaning of the compound where Anta is the meaning of the Avyaya. Now, what is this final part? Is it relational or is it absolute? And then the tradition also explains this fact by the statement Parigraha Pekshaya Samapti. So this Anta or Samapti is Parigraha Pekshaya. Parigraha Apeksha. Apeksha is with reference and Parigraha is some resolve or resolution. So end with reference to the resolution. What is this resolution? That is also explained in the following statement. Idanim etavan pradeshaha adhyetavyaha iti yavato grantha pradeshasya parigraha krtaha tadapeksha samapti. Idanim now etavan this much pradeshaha part adhyetavyaha is to be studied iti yavato grantha pradeshasya parigraha krtaha yavataha is this, this much grantha pradeshasya is part of the book parigraha krtaha resolution is made tadapeksha with reference to that we have to figure out what is the end so obviously the part of the book which is resolved to be studied right now, we have to focus on that and the final part of that part of the book is to be considered as the Anta. <clears throat> this is the explanation of the word Anta, which generally means end. With reference to the resolution that now from this point up to this point which is a part of the book is to be memorized or studied, the end part of this selected portion is intended here when we use the word Anta. Thus the semantic condition is different than the previous one namely Sakalya or entirety. So now we have the meaning to be conveyed together with Agni. What it actually means is that together with the text that ends in Agni. So a student has decided now to study a particular text or to memorize a particular text and <coughs> The end part of this selected particular text is that of Agni. And now with reference to this selected part, Agni becomes the end part. This is what is the meaning of Anta over here. So the Laukika Vigraha is Agnina Sah. Agnina Sah together with Agni. Since the word avyayam is mentioned in Prathama, sah, which is an avyaya, occupies the initial position of the samasa. So we have sah plus su plus agni plus ta. Sah denotes the meaning anta. 
सो सह प्लस सु प्लस अग्नि प्लस टा इज द अलौकिक विग्रह अग्निना सह इज द लौकिक विग्रह सह प्लस सु प्लस अग्नि प्लस टा विच इज एन अलौकिक विग्रह गेट्स द समास सौज्ञा आफ्टर विच इट गेट्स द प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञा बाय द सूत्र कृतधित सामसाश्च आफ्टर विच द सूत्र सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो अप्लाइज एंड डिलीट्स बोथ द सुप्स नेमली सु एंड टा सो वी हैव सह प्लस जीरो प्लस अग्नि प्लस जीरो नाउ द सूत्र अव्ययी भावे चा काले इज अप्लाइड एंड सह इज सब्स्टिट्यूटेड बाय स अव्ययी भावे चा काले स्टेट्स दैट इन द अव्ययी भाव समास वेन द उत्तर पद इज अदर दैन काल सह इज टू बी सब्स्टिट्यूटेड बाय स एंड सह ऑक्युपाइज द पोजिशन विच इज कॉल्ड पूर्व पद और द इनिशियल पोजिशन इन द समास दैट इज वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर अग्नि इज द उत्तर पद विच इज अदर दैन काल and therefore sah is substituted by sa on account of the sutra avyayi bhave cha kale 6381 and so we get sa plus 0 plus agni plus 0 then when we bring them together we get sa agni then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form sa agni this is the finally derived compound output and agni na sah is the laukika vigraha which is the input when we use sagni in the sentence we add the suffix su after it so we have sagni plus su and now because sagni is an avyayi bhava samasa it becomes an avyaya on account of the sutra avyayi bhavascha 1141 so we apply the sutra avyayad aap supaha and then so is deleted and so we get sagni plus 0 and finally we get sagni as the subanta form <coughs> we use this samasa in the following sentence saha sagni adhite he memorizes or studies up to the agni portion of that book what it means is that this portion is not necessarily the end portion of the book but it is the end portion of the resolved part of study for today so he reads up to agni that is the meaning that is the meaning of the condition ant in this particular sutra now with ant we come to the end of the semantic conditions stated in this particular sutra 2.1.6 it is important here to take a quick look at all these semantic conditions and note down certain peculiarities A 2.1.6 states or prescribes the avyayi bhava samasa in the context of various semantic conditions and those conditions are stated in this same sutra and these semantic conditions are also stated to be the meanings of the respective avyayas and we have noted that one avyaya sah does carry quite a lot of load of meanings in sanskrit the tradition has taken good care to explain them all the conditions in such a way that they do not overlap with each other like how sampatti is different than samruddhi or ant is different than sakalya is explained by the tradition and thus each one of the semantic conditions is demarcated from the other with the help of the discussion of the details of 
the meaning. Some of the semantic conditions are extensions of the literal meaning of the word stated in this particular sutra 216 and have specific context of rituals as well as philosophical explanations. For example, Anta has got the ritual context and Arthabhava has got the philosophical context which we explained there. So, Arthabhava has the context of the Nyaya philosophy and so Arthabhava is explained as Atyantabhava. Many avyayas denote various of these semantic conditions and become part of the process of derivation of the avyayi bhava samasa. The avyaya saha is observed to have denoted various semantic conditions like sadrusha and sampatti etc. And this saha gets substituted by sa in a particular given environment stated in the sutra avyayi bhave chakale. Yatha is also a peculiar avyaya whose meanings are mentioned to be the semantic conditions and the word yatha also gets compounded. This does not happen with reference to the other conditions where the tradition clearly says that paschat means the meaning after and the word paschat is not compounded. That does not happen with yatha. Yatha also gets compounded. <coughs> the general fact is that the avyayas occupy the initial position of the avyayi bhava samasa and are semantically related to the outside word and its meaning, mostly to the action denoted by the verbal root as its qualifications. Sometimes these avyayi bhava samasas, they also get related as agents of the actions, some of the examples we have already seen. The output of the derivation of the avyayi bhava samasa is the avyaya, affecting therefore the deletion of the sup added after it to give it the status of pada. With the exception of the avyayi bhava samasa ending in short a, the sup after which is retained and also modified as far as Tritiya, Saptami and Panchami Vibhakti are concerned, there are differences and elsewhere Su or Sup is substituted by Am. <coughs> it is also important to note that the Avyayi Bhava Samasa has the neuter gender stated by the Sutra Avyayi Bhavascha which appears in 2.4, 2.4.18. And because of this fact, the shortening of the final vowel of the Uttarapada happens. Like for example, Adhistri. Adhistri is an Avyayi Bhava Samasa and because it is a Napumsaka Linga Samasa, Raspo Napumsake Pratipadikasya applies and then the long e in stri is shortened and we get the samasa adhistri. This brings us to the close of the treatment of and the study of 216, a big sutra in which several semantic conditions are stated. Next, we study how the processing of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras. 
up to 2.1.21. How the process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence. This is what we shall study next. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.